Core Valley Line uh, project. Sorry, scrolling. Uh, I'm here today to present to you in uh, some details of the investigation that we carried out on the concrete strength of OLE foundations. So a little bit of background to those that aren't aware of the CVL project. Um, the CVL project is a multifaceted long-term rail improvement program designed to deliver a public transport transformation in the Cardiff and Valleys region, upgrading, enhancing, and improving the core valley lines, physical infrastructure in the areas you can see on the screen. Uh, in short, it's a complete transformation of all assets, including new OLE system, signaling, track, platforms, uh, stations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but today we're here just to focus on the uh, concrete foundations or OLE foundations. So since week 17 of 2021, uh, the project has installed and ensure, assured uh, more than 2,750 foundations. 16% of those being concrete foundations. 7% of those are uh, DTH or plunge piles. 9% uh, are concrete orca foundations. And for the OLE people, um, try and keep it as OLE as we can. 170 uh, SDK of electrification has been installed uh, to date. May have varied a little bit, I think, but we're there, thereabouts. Um, sorry, I'll go back one. Um, so we have around uh, 400 foundations left to install. And I think the majority of those is uh, a CHS design currently, um, but we are coming across some interesting ground uh, down in the valley lines and i would say that a good amount of those will end up being uh, concrete foundations um so the delivery uh, and testing of concrete is a pretty normal standard uh, delivery system for uh, uh for working on the railway um so deliveries via volumetric truck um, these are based at uh, access points, batched into hoppers and delivered by RRVs. Uh, slump tests and test cubes are taken for every port. Um, these are done at 7, 14, uh, 28, and a spare at 56. Um, we introduced a 14-day uh, cube to be able to enable the steel guys foresight in planning. Um, so... Uh, instead of waiting for the 28 and then giving them the yes, no, go, no, go, no, go, um, we can give them a, an idea of where they are with, with the concrete. And then if we've got good results, we're, we're landing still prior to the 28 day results. Um, delivery by volumetric is pretty standard from, from my perspective and my, uh, my the history of working on the railway um, gives you the idea, uh, gives you the ability to batch exactly what you want and also um, keeps your carbon footprint down um, and costs as well. Um, opening batching plants at night is, uh, is an expensive hobby. <clears throat> so in February 2022, we noticed that some of the cubes were not um, hitting the design strengths. Um, so we workshopped this with the suppliers, um, had those, uh, various meetings. Uh, and we needed to know why we were uh, getting to these strengths. Um, some of the questions that were raised were, are the test views being produced correctly, stripped, stored, etc.? Are the raw materials being stored correctly? Uh, are the volumetric trucks dispensing the materials uh, in the correct quantities? So those are some of the, the questions that were raised. Um, 
The teams were briefed on the way forward. Results seemed to be improved. Um, and the issue, as far as we were concerned, was closed out at that time. Um, we had some good workshops with, with all of the parties uh, trying to figure out why we were, why those results were dipping. Um, and uh, the only way forward really we could see was to continue under close scrutiny, scrutiny, and then, uh, and uh, yeah, the, uh, the cube results improved massively. In October, 2022, we discovered that uh, some of the cube results had been tampered with. Um, now this was through uh, a process where we're reviewing the cube results that come from the supplier. Um, they're uploaded into uh, QCS for the foundation. Uh, in Helix, which is a, a, our digital partner for assurance and planning. Um, and uh, it was noted that uh, when the PDF was uh, transferred onto the QCS or uploaded into Helix, the engineer at the time noticed that there was a difference between the two results that he had looking at it on the screen and on what was then presented in Helix. <laughs> it was kind of, well, why are, they, why are we getting two different results? Maybe I've uploaded the wrong PDF. So he deleted it, started again, and uh, did this a few times before uh, kind of realising that there was something not quite right with, uh, with it. Um, so on further inspection, uh, we discovered that multiple results had been tampered with. And here on the screen is an example of one of the uh, test results that we had come through. I've just focused on the detail. Um, I probably should have started at, at this point, but um, there are no names being mentioned in this presentation at all. Um, it's uh, not something that uh, should be done, I don't think, personally. But here you have uh, a snippet of, of the um, uh, test report and as you can see there are several boxes here that were over the top of this the compressive strengths here and then another box inserted over the top so you can see the original was a 33.1 at 28 days uh, and a 48.3 at 28 days and then over there is those boxes there were put over the remarks and mixed detail over there. So you can see that um, what was, uh, what had been done by somebody um, to, I guess, hide the fact that at 28 days, the, the cubes were below strength. <clears throat> the one thing we did notice was that whoever had done this uh, hadn't actually covered up the failure load. So if you um, wanted to get to 48 newtons, your failure load based on the Q would need to be over a thousand. So this was something that wasn't changed. Um, but for an engineer that's reviewing uh, one of these and it's coming in and you've got other jobs to be doing, you probably wouldn't take any notice of these failure loads and go, hang on a minute, that doesn't add up. You, you're just purely focusing on this. Is it done? Is it right? Yes, it's correct. Upload that information. These are trust documents um, and we would just um, upload it and move on. And that's how we found that out. So lots of questions. <laughs> Why, where, who, how many? Um, we implemented an immediate full review of all concrete cube tests. Um, concrete foundation installation was put on hold until the investigation could determine um, what had been, what, what happened and how it happened. And um, we needed to, there was a lot of questions as you can imagine. Um, as engineers, we were like a tracker. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, an Excel tracker was formed. Um, all concrete foundations, uh, we needed to figure out how many of this had happened to. Uh, 
Um, so we needed to go through every single test result that we had, seeing if it had been doctored, tampered with. A um, huge amount of work was done by the team, trying to figure out exactly what um, what had gone on, what was what, where we were with things. Um, the other problem was that um, we're obviously progressing with, with construction. We needed to figure out also what OLE was on these concrete foundations. Was it just a mass? Was there SPS? Was it wired or not? Um, there was a lot, a huge amount. It wasn't just this foundation and there's an issue with it. Um, we just put it on hold. We, we needed to figure out where it was in the process. Um, uh, we had the uh, contractors had their um, laptops forensically examined. People were interviewed um, to try and determine who had done this. And as I stated, that's as far as I will go on that. Uh, I will not um, give any more details of where that ended up. Um, so do we replace foundations? Do we leave them? <laughs> do we uh, try to fix them? Is there a way of doing this? Um, so uh, we had to try and figure out how what, what we were going to do next. Um, there's lots of factors as well that, that are involved in this. Uh, such as access to the railway. Um, we're on this project that is uh, that has everything going on at the same time. So you've got signaling guys out, you've got track guys out. We're very constricted with, with access. So we needed to find uh, the best way forward that fitted the project, but also assured the foundations to continue in, in that process. Sorry, I'm going to the next slide. So, first of all, we needed to know what, what was affected. So, we've got some numbers. And it stopped. Sorry. Uh, here we go. So, in total, at that time, we had uh, 140 concrete foundations that had been installed by, uh, sorry, that had the concrete supplied, uh, yeah, 140 foundations that had, we found were affected. Over those 140 foundations, uh, 217 results, over 71 foundations had been tampered with. So that's a huge amount of, of those test results that had been uh, doctored. We uh, replaced eight foundations. That was due to, uh, I think there was one which was a design change. Uh, and the others were because of uh, program constraints. And we were entering at the time, I think an EIS event um, and we needed those foundations there then. Um, obviously, we've got to wait for the for the test results to come through to ensure that uh, that the concrete was good before we start loading it. Um, and also, we needed uh, TQs raised to find out, you know, these foundations, these structures needed to move. Was this affecting anything else with the OLE? Um, we found that 82 foundations were under strength at 28 days. Forty were under strength at 56 days. Um, we made a judgment. So the original uh, design mix that we were using is a C3545. Um, and that came from project uh, specific designs. I know master series is a lot less less than that, but um, as a project, we just we decided to accept forty uh, newtons as rather than forty five, um, and this was this, this went through um, design reviews to, to get to that initial um, strength. We then came to the point that. After all of this, we, we found that there were 19 foundations that were under strength. And they would become the focus of our investigation going forward. 
So what next? Uh, the team decided to uh, that we needed to confirm the structural. There were two elements in in going forward: the structural adequacy of the foundations, and the durability lifespan of the foundation. So, structural adequacy and durability. Um, we also carried out core and petrographic testing on the on the foundations. So calls were taken of the 19 foundations uh, to test for strength because you need to know exactly what is at that location rather than the cubes we have. Once they disappear off of site, we have no idea how they're managed or treated. Um, so if we take a core of that exact foundation, then we know exactly what concrete is in that foundation rather than the testing of a cube that was part of the um, And then petrographic testing, um, if you're not aware, uh, is a microscopic test to determine the contents of the concrete. So uh, water cement ratio, that kind of thing, aggregate type. Uh, we commissioned a design assessment. So that was uh, put in place. We brought in a design house and they would uh, then uh, do an assessment based on all of the existing or as built information. So existing concrete strengths, what, what structures were going to go on them. Um, uh, and they would do an assessment based on all of the as built information, including the cores and the petrographic results. We also decided to do an independent uh, design review assessment. Uh, the 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 design assessment, the initial one, would uh, later become our uh, combined form two three, uh, being a validation of the installed foundations, uh, along with a cap two check, and then the independent, uh, sorry, the independent um, assessment would later become our cap three check. So let's have a quick look at the cube results we were getting. So you can see there, uh, we have our 7, 14, 28, 56 spares, and then these on the end of the cores. Um, those strengths there are actually the cube strengths of the cores. Um, so you can see that all of the 19 foundations that we were left with um, out of the report, there was a few 56 day results that were missing. Um, but generally, we had everything that we needed. You can see that at 28 days, everything was below 40. And that was what we needed to hit. Um, and then you can see the majority of the co actual calls taken from the foundations were all above 40, apart from these three here. Um, so I think a rule of thumb for concrete is uh, it needs to be 65% of its final strength at seven days. So it needed to be uh, 30 newtons, I think, at seven days, which you can see they're all below, well below the, uh, the required strength. So uh, design assessment, structural adequacy, and um, this is based on a, 25, a C2530 strength. Um, they checked for uh, fastener check, bolt pull out and concrete cone failure, shear resistance, axial resistance, and bending moment. Durability wise, at the core test results, petrographic examination, core test results, Petrographic results and the structural assessment based on the lower strength of C2530. Uh, so, petrographic results proved, oh geez, petrographic results proved that the concrete uh, contents were as per design. So, why were the cubes a lower strength? The petrographic results prove that 
they were exactly as they should be. Four test results, as we've seen in the previous slide, they uh, they proved to be uh, above strength apart from part five of the foundations. Uh, they were below uh, the requirement that we needed, uh, sorry, below 40. Um, the design assessment, uh, sorry, I missed something. We actually carried out NDT um, tests as well. Um, and they were on all 140 foundations. Um, it was felt that that was something that was would uh, give us extra information on all of those foundations. Um, actually, the NDTs came back that the integrity of all of them. In bar three, there was uh, anomalies on three of them, um, but they all came back sound, uh, no issues or problems. So the design assessment, uh, the form two three that was done, the assessment based on structural and durability, that came back that everything would pass. There's no issues, no problems, um, and that uh, at those as built states of concrete, that design assessment informed us that uh, it it would all pass and there was no issues or problems with anything on site. The independent design assessment, however. Um, or our CAP3 check, found, also found structurally that everything would be fine based on the lower concrete strengths. But a CAP3 check is bound by codal requirements of Eurocode 2. So they weren't effectively allowed to review, they're only allowed to review 28 day results. Can't review post results. There's nothing within their tables or within the design uh, that. They can't check the 56 day or the uh, petrographic results that couldn't be included in their in their review. So we were stuck with the 28 day results of the as built information that we had. Um, and the reason uh, so we have lower results and because we had lower results of 28 days, um, they were low enough that we had to consider the exposure classes in concrete for three uh, for freeze thaw, easy for me to say, uh, XF1, which is, I believe, 35 Newton, and XC2 for carbonisation, uh, wet, rarely dry concrete, which is based, I think, at 30, included a table in this somewhere. So we have our CAP2, uh, our design assessment that gives us, tells us everything's fine, but because the CAP3 check can't check all of that extra information, we're now being told that we have to, we're bound by that 28 day result. So we have to now consider XF1 and XC2 within our uh, strengths. So here's table eight from Eurocode 2, and you can see XC2 is here, C2530, and uh, XF1 is there at 28.35. Um, so let's go back to the cube results page uh, and see what doesn't pass. Um, so you can see we're left, these, these pass uh, those requirements. But these three here, we're, we're stuck with. Uh, they're below that. That uh, they're above C30 for carbonisation, so we're, we're good on that. But they are below the 35, which gives us that um, free store issue with concrete. So I say all past the XC2 requirement of 30. And we, we were left with the three foundations that fall below XF1. Um, so how do we proceed? Uh, so um, we were looking for a solution on those three foundations. They are 
below the strength of what. So the design assessment says it's OK, but because it's below 35, we now have to, on those three foundations, we then have to um, consider the free storing uh, the exposure class and how do we get over that. So currently, we are looking at uh, coating those three foundations. Effectively, the sides are covered by the steel um, casing that they're encased in, so the freeze thaw shouldn't affect us there. Uh, and they're all with a 100 mil up stand. Probably your the top half a meter, maybe less, is affected by the freeze thaw issue if there's a really bad freeze. Um, so we're looking at the top of the foundation and the top of the foundation only, and we're looking to now um, be able to coat those three foundations with something to stop any carbonization um, or the risk of carbonization and anything to do with the uh, with freeze thaw or freeze issue getting into those into those three foundations. Uh, lessons learned. So um, what we found, what, uh, what the investigation did find, find is that the concrete test queue process was um, poorly managed. Um, and I think that's probably um, across the board in, in a lot of construction areas where um, once those cubes go away from you, where, where do they go? How are they managed? Um, uh, you know, when are they stripped? What are they put in a bath? Uh, are they not? Um, so yeah, the, I think there there's um, we could do a lot more, and we are doing trying to do a lot more with regards to uh, managing those cubes and 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 the way forward with those. Um, are concrete test cubes still the best way to test concrete? Um, there are lots of other, it's a standard, you have to stick to it, but I think there are other, uh, there's, there's new stuff out there nowadays um, coming through the market with sensors that you can drop into concrete to give you an idea of strengths, etc. So I think uh, the future is, is there's, there are additional ways of looking at concrete strengths, but um, yeah, is I don't know if cubes are the best way forward in this modern day. Um, design info. Uh, we found, uh, I found, um, that design info uh, on various drawings um, that sometimes uh, you get uh, a bit of copy and pasting from designers from previous um, designs that they've done for, for foundations. And then it's just a uh, case. Okay, well, that's probably the same uh, uh, criteria. It's the same foundation with similar uh, ground. Um, so there's a little bit of that going on, I think. Um, and we found that there were some things that weren't quite right with designs. Uh, it, it doesn't ring true with the exact uh, foundation that you're looking at. Um, I think that is it, guys. Um, sorry, it's short and sweet. I've raced through that and just realised the time, 20 minutes. Um, and I think I had a, 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 lot, lot, a lot more than that on my uh, presentation. But um, yeah, that is the presentation uh, today. Thank you very much, Paul. Very important. Um, sorry for those. Well, I'm looking at the camera. Sorry uh, for those online. I uh, understand the camera has gone. So okay. there is a the camera in the room down there. Um, and I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. The uh, buzzing has played. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we have got a question online, I see. Someone's got their hand up. I'm going to ask, jump in, ask a question first, if I may. Yes. So this obviously affected the early foundations. Yeah. Have we looked at any other? other disciplines if they received concrete from the same source, such as signal bases and things, was that considered? It hasn't, and that's a very good point. Um, 
uh, obviously as a project, uh, there's lots of disciplines mm -hmm. using concrete um, that hasn't been explored. Okay. Um, but um, I no doubt there would be, not the, on the project that I'm aware of, but yeah, it's uh, concrete has been supplied, I guess, elsewhere. Oh, wait, yes. Uh, thanks, Paul. All right, um, okay, I think we've got a question from Tim Young. If uh, Tim can come off mute and ask your question. Yeah, hi, Paul. Hi, great, Tim. great presentation there. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I just, I just wondered. It, it sounds like you set your um, your concrete design parameters, you know, higher than than what the OLE for concrete standards suggests, C thirty five. Yeah, and and then throughout the process, you sort of accepted that the C thirty five was was fine anyway. And and I just wondered if you you, you know, I sort of understand make, making the strength higher to to ensure that you achieve the C thirty five, but sort of next time you do it would you you know would you do anything differently with the strength initially would you go for the c35 or do you think you'd go for the higher strength again yeah so so this the, the higher strength came on a design uh project specific des, um foundation design um when i started on the project obviously we were looking at master series design requirements which is a lot less um and i made the decision to to go for the highest strength because um, when you're looking at two concrete strengths or two concrete designs, um, I went for the, the highest strength <laughs> rather than the lowest strength. Um, in hindsight, I would probably challenge that that requirement a little bit at, at IDC and at, at design reviews just to see if, if that is definitely a requirement that's needed. Um, so yeah, in hindsight, I would challenge that. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, go yeah. Yeah, I guess it's given at least it's given you the wiggle room anyway. I mean, we we've sort of on on middle and main on the CRE for foundations on middle and main line, uh, and we we set our our standard as C thirty five, but and we were we were typically achieving an average of about C forty, um, but we did have we did have issues with cubes and we did have some fails and, and we did also have to core as well. Um, okay. so, so, so we, so we, we didn't have the problem problems that you had with the falsifying and test results, luckily. Um, and, and we also found that the cores achieved much better results than the cubes. Um, and, yeah. and in, in the sort of cube making process, we, we saw sort of, cause the volumetric, uh, suppliers were actually taking the cubes away with them to the test lab. And we found one of the problems was the, you know, the, the transportation was was not the best so we we sort of reverted to storing them in a in a container on site in a tank for a few days before they were taken away um yeah. and then we very early on we had problems with well basically never use polystyrene formless because they're just a night we found out they were using those and yeah uh, they can be a nightmare um and i think we we sort of revert to 100 mil um you know proper cast um Cores and then with rebriefings of all the site guys, making sure the supervisors watch the you know the, the cube manufacturing process. We we sort of had a lot less problems, um, but we still had to core some and 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 sort of very very similar to what you had. The the strengths were way higher than than the cubes, you know. So it's quite interesting that you know that to see the same the same very similar things. Yeah, I think it's. It's probably across the industry, whether you work on the railway or whether you're just in construction, you know, house building, etc. It's, I think, once that cube, once those test cubes go off site, you have no control over them. Um, yeah. I don't know whether instead of a uh, instead of the concrete supplier um, uh, having their own crew to do the the you know the making of the cubes and the slump tests and things whether it should be um, an independent that, that does it. And I know, you know, the testing houses such as, um, I'll, I'll put a name, Soccer Tech, whether they, whether you bring them in to do their, to do your, your, your test cubes rather than a supplier or, or your, you know, your installation contractor. Um, yeah. It's an independent yeah, then. Or you, or you yeah, train your yeah, train people in house, and, and you get your own guys to do it. Um, and and 
they just get picked up on a on a Monday. The, the, the thing I found was that a lot of the time you have, you know, the good old Saturday night, um, Saturday night uh, possession and you're, you're doing a few concrete foundations and then the testing guy disappears at whatever time in the morning. There's no guarantee where those cubes then go. Do they sit in his van until Monday morning when he goes back to the depot, or are yeah, they going yeah. back and 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 being you know stripped within the time period and, and chucked in a water bath, etc. So yeah, agreed. It's difficult, difficult process to control, isn't it? Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, I, I had another question as well. Did, did you have any issues with um, the concrete level dropping? Of con um, so concrete. Yeah, so in the foundations, I mean, we always use a steel casing and obviously, um, you know, sort of poker it. Um, but now, now and again, you get, you just get like a, you, you know, just drops down, settles um, after, uh, you know, after you leave site and then you have to sort of scabble and grout. Um, is, yes. is that something you, you, you had as well? or We do, yeah. Yeah, I found that on Gwep as well. I think it just where you've augured out obviously the, that weight of that concrete going in um it, it, it moves a little bit i think it fills those couple of little voids that it doesn't do straight away and you you get that that small dipping of the foundation um yeah we're we're, we're topping it up with a kind of high strength grout i think it yeah, actually goes similar to going back to one of those slides i think there's a one of the core tests on the on the photographs Oh, I saw. I saw. There's about an inch. You on can the top see. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, on the top yeah, there like is really. is where we've had where we've topped it up. Convex for GP, is it by any chance, or is something like that? Anyway. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, something. Yeah, that. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Nice one. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Paul. Okay. No problem. Um, Tom Skinner has a observation, I think, about lessons learned. Uh, Simon, do you want to come Hello. off mute and uh, add anything? <laughs> Not really. Thanks, uh, Simon. Um, okay. Yeah. Hi, Paul. Um, thanks very much hi, for that. Simon. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's pretty much. It's pretty much reinforcing what Tim said. There was um, there was an opportunity to save some cost to do the cube tests ourselves. So we used contractors to do the um, the um, the concrete, and we would do the cube tests ourselves. But it did generate some problems, and we didn't get some good crush tests, as Tim um, intimated on on the previous conversation. So um it's something to resist i think from from you know there's there's opportunities to reduce cost and do things ourselves but it yielded a a, a bigger problem down down the uh down the line i we saved the pounds but spent a fortune due the assurance to evidence uh that actually the concrete um foundations did achieve the right um strength depth it, it causes chaos you've got a core test you've got to spend a lot lots of people paul's time tim young's time doing stuff where potentially if we Add a little bit more QA around what the cube test results actually mean, and, and take it a bit more seriously. You, you may have negated this from from concept, you're right? When you look at root cause analysis, mm. so um, yeah, that that it, it it rang true. We didn't have the issues that you had for sure, uh, Paul, but we, we had similar, same same but different, um, same yep. root cause. So yeah, that that was it really. So yeah, thanks. Great, thanks, Simon. Looking good after your half marathon as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't feel it. <laughs> um, so, uh, Phil has said his connection topped out. Uh, yeah, sorry, Phil. I think the question will be answered if you can. The video will go back online. Um, it might be worth you having a, a rewatch of the bit that dropped out for you there. Um, we have another comment, a question on site, uh, hand raised, and that was by Jason Bowen. Thank you, Jason Bowen. Would you like to come off mute and ask? Hi, guys. Sorry. Uh, here under false pretenses, I've uh, had to log in on my colleagues' uh, teams. This is uh, Simon Robinson from Multi Cruise Concrete. <laughs> Hi, Simon. Hi. Um, Paul and I know each other very well. We've done a lot of uh, rail works and CIH foundations over the years together. And uh, as a concrete supplier, it's interesting to come in. We've worked on this project extensively. <clears throat> when we're talking about concrete testing and sampling, when we were working on the Great Western electrification years ago, we actually found that bringing in outdoor testing houses was the problem. Um, we found that a number of times our concrete was being misrepresented by these independent testing houses. We had several situations where we'd be on site, this highly designed, very technical product was being produced, 
and you would find guys who weren't specialists uh, taking, we, we have one ridiculous example where they were taking concrete away in plastic bags. They'd run out of cube moulds. It was this exact kind of Saturday <laughs> funny hours kind of shift. And I, I just so happened to be on site and said to the team at Amy at the time, I said, guys, we can't possibly stand by these results. You know, yeah. once we hand you the concrete, this kind of becomes your responsibility. As such, we actually created our own in-house technical facility. We don't crush the cubes, but we do sample them because to us, giving the concrete its best possible representation, giving it its best chance to demonstrate to you guys as the clients exactly where it needs to be is essential for us. Uh, and I decided that actually as a supplier, the best way of demonstrating that, ensuring that it gets to uh, well transported in a warm divan on a, a plate that's ever so slightly sprung to mean that you're not going to have these, these issues with the top of the cube uh, forming, uh, then getting them back to a temperature controlled environment. Then the very next day, 12 to 24 hours later, stripping those cubes, marking them correctly, putting them in the water bath, mm -hmm. then getting them taken into an independent source. It, we use ACS testing in, in Bristol and Pool. That actually gave the system real integrity because it meant that we were demonstrating the best attributes of the concrete, treating it as it should yeah. be treated because we have the most vested interest in that then giving it to a NAMAS tested independent laboratory who then issued to us and you directly the results which kept the integrity of the process i just think that maybe giving it to those individuals rather than someone who may not have the vested interest in making the product perform as well as possible in our experience over the last decades actually proved to be very valuable yeah definitely i would say that um uh i agree completely uh, simon and i think um, really, you, uh, us as contractors or PCs, um, we should be doing more stringent checks on our suppliers. Um, there's no harm in going, you know, it, it's not a, a project where you just call somebody up and say, I need a concrete tester or I need a supplier. And, and yeah, OK, happy days. Go and visit your suppliers. Go and go and have a look at the facilities that they've got. Go and go and see the guys in action on, on another project, um, you know. Like Simon saying, uh, turning up with a bucket or a bag or whatever, it, 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 you know, go and visit those guys, go and see their facilities. You know, but, you know, like going back, I said to um, was going back to the point of um, when we had a, an issue in February, was the fact that the questions that were raised were, you know, was the volumetric truck dispensing what it should be doing? Um, you know. Uh, how were those raw materials being stored? Um, you know, my initial thought when I found this out was, I think there's too much water in the mix. And have they been storing that sand or, or those materials outside? We've had a huge, great big downpour of rain, and then suddenly they're chucking that sand into the into the mixers. And then, and then the, the volumetric drug says, well, I need this much water, but there's already a load of water in, in the sand. And suddenly that was my absolute first initial thought when I saw the, 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 the lower results in February. Obviously, um, fast forward to March and it was a very different picture. But yeah, I definitely uh, agree with Simon. And, and as he said, I've, I've personally used Simon in, on a lot of projects. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Is there any questions in the room? Oh, we have got a question in the room. Um, I'm going to preface this question. Sorry, would by, you like to introduce yes, yourself? Yes, sorry, Garrity, our actions reality. <laughs> I'm going to preface this question by noting that we're being recorded and that this will be on the PWI website in due course. So I appreciate that you can talk about any of the specifics. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you're not going to comment, but I suspect there may be legal proceedings going on from this. So we've got to be very careful what we say. But I can't help feeling we, we've spent lots of time talking about the symptoms and none talking about the cause of this. Um, and as, you know, as, as engineers, we've all signed the PWI Code of Conduct, haven't we? You know, we're professional engineers, we've got an ethical obligation beyond our company, beyond our project, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, the reality is that somebody in this project felt incentivized to falsify yeah. records. Yeah. What? What do you think that says about the culture? And I'm not picking on CVL now, I'm talking about the industry. What yeah. does it say about the culture in the industry? And what can we do to try and stamp out that kind of behaviour and, and make sure that we do professional engineering without putting yourself in the <laughs> risk? 
uh, can we do? Is it is it a matter of understanding the consequences of these actions to some extent? Yes. In that yeah. respect. Yeah, good point. Yeah. You know? Um yeah. Not just uh, from a health and safety perspective, as opposed to anything else. Yeah. Obviously, for for as you say, going into, into legal. Yeah. Things. I think as uh, like you say, as engineers, you, you would or, doesn't not necessarily engineers, you would see something that wasn't right. In, in anything that you do, and then you try and fix it. But to continue, uh, again, uh, for 217 results, I find difficult to get my head around. Um, when we finally got through all the numbers, that was the bit I couldn't get my head around. Because, you know, we should all be working together, and if there's a problem, then, then share it. You know, this isn't quite right. We need to do something about it. How can we do it? Well, the best way around it is to look at it. Well, let's go and have a look at this element. Look at all the other elements uh, across the, the spectrum from it being delivered to it being tested to, you know, where is the issue? Find it and fix it. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case in this. In this, um, I think also, I think obviously, because you've got supply chain and yeah. it's very difficult to control culture in supply chain harder than controlling the culture in your own organization we all know that's hard enough sometimes yeah um i think i mean i, I can think of instances where where um i've been working on a project and we've made a mistake quite a significant one but again as soon as it came to light first thing we said is right we will analyze this problem we won't be charging for this service yeah it's on us and we spent six months looking at it, and, and eventually we we kind of got to the same place. It wasn't to do with it wasn't to do with concrete, it was to do with um, steelwork allocations. But we got to a point where we could demonstrate that what was actually installed was still safe. Yes. But you know, we had a culture of put our hand up, and say, you know, somehow we've got to foster a culture with the supply chain where we say, look, if you screw up. Just tell us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We'll 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 meet you halfway. Yeah. You know, we won't we won't set the legal attack dogs on you, but you need to be open with us. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. if you wait, if you leave it for two hundred and seventeen <laughs> foundations, then yeah. we will set the attack dogs on you. Yeah. Yeah. I must add that the the people in in question are no longer on the project, right. and they will never. As long as I'm on the project, they will not be returned to the project. Um, um, and that is why we have suppliers that, that we trust and, and, and that are on the project and still on the project and continue to build. of trust, isn't it, where people can have open yes. conversations, not yeah. feel the need to hide. Yes, yeah, that's the difficult bit is that, you know, I just don't, I don't <laughs> my head doesn't compute with just continuing to hide something, um, you know. Yeah, and the, you know the worst, the absolute. Maybe I'm being a little bit pessimistic, mm -hmm. but the worst thing is, is that if that was a really bad found batch of concrete, and there really was a really bad issue with, I mean, we've gone through the process and proved that it isn't. But if it was, and there was an issue, and something fell over or fell down, there could be serious consequences to to to, to this. You know, you know, we're talking. It's an OLE foundation. It could be a motorway gantry. It could be whatever. Um, so yeah, it, it is <laughs> difficult to kind of get. Yeah, there, is, there are catastrophic risks associated with this kind of. Yeah, thing. I always, always say to people, you know, you know, over in line foundations, they're really simple. They're just holding up glorified lamp posts. <laughs> you know, we shouldn't have be. You know, we shouldn't be. We spend too much. Fine, but of course, I assume naively it turns out that when we specify a particular grade of concrete, that's what we get. You can't rely on the material being put in the ground. Yeah. Then suddenly, you're actually you can have a catastrophic failure of the foundation. You're going to be updating the risk register on the next design. There you go. Uh, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, I think, sorry, Jason's got his hand up there, and I think it's Simon if he wants to come back in. 
Sorry, guys, I don't want to monopolise anyone more time. I understand I'm here as a supplier and uh, Paul was very kind to allow me to jump on the call. But I think there's, uh, there's an interesting point that the gentleman just raised. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. What we've struggled with for years as an independent supplier uh, is this level of engagement. Uh, so on a lot of these projects, we find that we are running on weekly purchase orders. So we're relatively small and medium sized enterprises. And I speak for the, the, the majority of the volumetric concrete supply industry which means that we can be uh, incredibly dynamic, we can be incredibly engaging and support these projects in a very, very meaningful way. The problem that we tend to have is that no one from a PC or any other level, whether that be PC, whether that be your piling contractors, offers any level of commitment to us. I think our most successful project we ever did, we refer back to the um, Great Western Electrification, was when ABC Electrification said, look, we understand you to be a supplier, but we want you to, to upscale what you can do for us. We want to be a bit more demanding on you. But in return, here is a year, 18 months, two years worth of work. Here is a purchase order covering the duration. Now, can you properly engage with us on this very specialised project, product, service level? and manage the process more. And what it did is it gave us the resources to do that. What we tend to find is that, I mean, we're working on a project now um, in Wales on the railway where we're there for a week and that's fine. But what as a medium sized enterprise does that mean for the following week? We're having resources and individuals in the business that are specialists, are very, very highly skilled and trained in this specific part of the industry, but with no long term commitment to a project. And I think maybe we've been trying for years to try and get more engagement as a as part of the supply chain to enable us to invest in a way that gives you better results mm -hmm. and there never seems to have been bridging that gap as just a baseline concrete supplier no one will move to that slightly further point of engaging us at an earlier stage saying we have a project you know with x number of locations to fill over a two-year period mm -hmm. we would like to award you the supply mm -hmm. however you need to be um, xyz you need to do more things for us you need to put yourself in a position to do these things uh, which we could give you if we were to have that that kind of commitment from the pcs yeah yeah it's a good point i think um from an oe perspective i guess you guys still work wire you have your suppliers you have your guys that are there you know exactly who, probably who you're going to but i think personally and because i'm a civil engineer and i work on OLE foundations maybe there isn't enough, enough focus on foundation supply and materials um you know the cages that go in the concrete foundations the, the, the you know the materials that go into a into a foundation maybe we're not looking at that enough um from a supply point of view and getting more commitment i think it's also worth covering that concrete foundations are almost a swear word in the industry in that how much they cost yes and therefore everyone's focus is design them out design them out design them out design them out yep. Yeah. And ultimately what that means is they are the last thing on the list. But there's lots more that can go wrong with a concrete foundation than anything else. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, it's it's probably an industry challenge is that you know driving CHS foundations has probably led to the drop off in quality of the yeah. concrete foundations. Any specific reasons for concrete rather than CHS? Sorry, was there any specific reason to go for a concrete rather than CHS? No, it's, no, it's up with some, CH, some concrete. Strength. Yeah, ground conditions, um, uh, the early restraints with um, with loadings. Um, you need that self weight from from the from the concrete mm -hmm. side, don't you? Yeah, and then also with the, when it's a uh, back side, the actual central foundation that you get. Obviously, if it's the load is vertically into the into the ground. The concrete foundation obviously has got a lot a bigger area than the than a pile that's what 10 mil thick by yeah. 16 it's sort of that bearing You're capacity right. is a lot yeah, yeah, about yeah, four yeah, years yeah. ago the majority of our foundations were concrete mm -hmm. and overhead line engineers knew their concrete yeah they had a basic understanding yeah yeah minimum concrete cover they just look <laughs> <laughs> actually I'll, I'll add we've got two gravity pads on the project as well concrete good stuff the gravity pads another gravity pad. <laughs> <laughs> okay right um as it goes on the into a uh, uh, gravity pad i've been i'll call the meeting to an end <laughs> uh thank you paul for no um, the presentation it was certainly very different to our normal presentations pwi sort of it's all 
um, sort of design based or maintenance based. So actually seeing the seeing the issues that we've got on site from your perspective, and obviously the a very good um, contribution from Simon as well at the end there regarding um, the supply chain as well uh, makes it a very interesting subject. Yeah. So thank you very much for for coming and speaking to us, and uh, so let's thank all and uh, hope to see everyone uh, for our next monthly meeting, which is online only. Uh, look out, uh, keep look out for um, future announcements. So I can't quite remember what it is. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone. Yes, thank right. you. Bye.